Good morning, I'm James, and I'm based in the Material Science Department. And I use the Sputter Deposition and Nano Patterning Suite uh, for novel device fabrication. So the background to my research is in Spintronics. And this is where scientists and industry have been interested in exploiting the spin of charge carriers for logic and memory elements for energy efficient computation. So it's thought that vast energy savings are possible over current logic and memory technology. So to give you one example of that, if you think about a magnetic hard disk drive, the way that a magnetic moment is uh, flipped, so your ones and zeros are flipped at the moment, is to apply, a magnet, to apply a magnetic field. That's your right process. So an alternative could be to use an effect called spin transfer torque. So if we have an unpolarized cut current, and we pass that through a ferromagnet, it, the electrons become spin polarized. This current can then exert a torque on a second ferromagnetic layer and rotate that magnetization. So we're influencing the magnetic state by the application of a current, which is vastly more energy efficient. This already has some uses in specialist magnetic random access mem memory applications. But the problem with this is that it requires huge current densities which lead to unacceptable dual heating. So one possible solution to that is what if we tried this in the superconducting state where there's no, uh, there's no ohmic dissipation. I'm aiming to generate spin, po spin polarized supercurrents in the superconducting state. So I start by sputter depositing a metallic stack where the gray here is the superconductor and it's a kind of sandwich where in the middle we have the spin act, these layers of the spin active structure. I first do a conventional photolithography step to thin this down to a four micron track. Then I transfer this into the dual beam system, which I'll show on the next slide. And I cut out these two slots to define my final device geometry, where the current path needs to pass from one superconductor through to the other through this spin active stack. And that's what I do my electrical measurements on. The advantage of this technique is that we don't need to break vacuum at any of the intermediate interfaces. So here's the system itself. The dual beam Zeiss crossbeam 540 has a scanning electron microscope. So there's an electron beam there. And it also has a gallium ion beam, which is used to physically mill away material and create those two slots I showed. And that's here, the focused ion beam. So with this system, I can both fabricate and also image what I'm making in the same system, which is very useful. So here is uh, an electron image of such a fabricated device, where the mid-gray here is, are my superconducting layers, and the bright line is the middle spin active structure. And hopefully you can see that the current path has been uh, constrained such that it has to pass from one superconductor to the other through this middle spin active structure. So this is a successful device. And later on at my poster, I'm happy to show the electrical measurements that show that indeed we do have some signature of having generated a spin polarized supercurrent. So thank you.